The Toronto Blue Jays picked up a win, and for the first time in like 26 days, the White Sox got a win. We're not going to talk about it, but it's interesting, isn't it? You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. We have the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. This the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit matchup to $100. I'm Braden Wasco. He's Carter first. You can find us on Twitter, Braden 5 Wasco. Carter first too, as well on Instagram and TikTok at locked on blue Jays. Uh, and if you haven't dropped a subscription here on YouTube already, it really helps us out. Keeps us at the top of your guys's page, keeps you guys up to date on all the latest blue Jays information. And yeah, the Jays won today. You know, I, I yesterday, sorry. And, and you know what? At the end of the day, they beat the Orioles. Uh, I'm a little bit happy, I guess. It was nice to see Kirk uh, send a ball to Narnia. And Chris Bassett had an absolutely outstanding day. But, but Carter, before we get into that, I mean, me and you have been, we're, we're just training for this golf tournament here that we're about to go in this weekend. And, uh, you know, we had a very promising round. And then a very unpromising round. We play again tonight. Do you feel like we're going to dial it back in? I'm hoping to be like Chris Bass. I've been struggling the last little bit, the last couple of rounds out there, and just dialing in when it matters. Uh, a big outing from him. But uh, for us, yeah, it's just uh, it's always a battle. It's like this podcast. Uh, things aren't necessarily going well every single time, but uh, especially in Toronto Blue Jays land. But, hey, we're going to be out there. We're going to be having fun. And uh, we'll have some, uh, a little bit of lubricant to help us out and maybe uh, calm the nerves a little bit out there when it comes to game day. Perfect. I love to hear it. Yeah. So let's, let's just get right into it. I did bring up the white Sox thing. They did, uh, you know, obviously break the losing streak, so they won't be getting uh, the record, but the season's still an, a complete wash for them. Like what an embarrassing year, like from a Toronto blue Jays perspective. I mean, we had a terrible season, but Oh my God, the white Sox have been just terrible. Uh, Carter going into uh, yesterday's game. Of course, the Toronto blue Jays beat the boss, uh, the Baltimore Orioles five to two. And we talk about it, right? Chris Bassett was an absolute dog today. Seven innings pitched, three hits given up, two runs, nine strikeouts, two walks, of course, the home run. Um, And from a guy that hasn't had the best few outings lately, he came out and, yeah, he really shoved yesterday, Carter. Yeah, he looked really good. looked like prime Chris Bassett. Again, in the month of July, not a very good month for him. Had a lot of struggle starts, but this was just prime Chris Bassett. Was using all of his pitches, locating them effectively. Uh, that's what you need to do against this Baltimore Orioles lineup, especially with like all the prospects, all the guys that they have in this lineup. Just looking at it compared to the Toronto Blue Jays, like this is this is insane. It's everything that we're asking for. Adley Rushman's struggling. He's still hitting fifth in the lineup. Just absolutely nuts. Colin Cows was good. Santon Day or Gunnar Henderson. This is a very tough lineup. One of the toughest lineups to pitch against in the league. The fact that you pitched into the eighth inning and had a, lo- a big opportunity to do that. A shout out to Hannesis Cabrera getting uh, Chris Bass out of that with a good stat line. How did the Toronto Blue Jays win? Overall, it's what was advertised in the season. You're going to have good pitching. The bullpen was supposed to be good and help you out for wins like this. But overall, a great team win. Just uh, suck that it's, it's like 113th game of the season, and it doesn't really matter if they have this good team win anymore. Yeah, it doesn't. And you know what? I, you, you gave a shout-out to uh, Cabrera there, but also another guy that's been still outstanding is Chad Green. I mean, he came into the game, and I'm like, oh, oh, it's fine. It's over. And he's just been that electric that, you know, when he goes into the game, he's just going to clean house. And he did that again. Uh, Of course, one inning pitched and he, yeah, got, uh, got the save there for himself. So good on him. Uh, Carter, another couple guys to get into here. I mean, George Springer had had an 0 for 4 day with two strikeouts. Loper Vito as well, uh, 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. Vladdy 1 for 2. Horowitz 2 for 3. Kirk 2 for 4 with, of course, the big home run. Dalton Varsho 2 for 4, actually a surprising nice little day from him. Uh, Ernie Clement, one for three. Barger, one for four uh, with two RBI as well. And uh, Leo Menez, 0 for three. Um, you know what? Shout out to Dalton Varsho. Another outstanding catch in the outfield. And then uh, to go two for four, I mean, that's just, that's the kind of game we need to see a little bit more consistently uh, from Dalton Varsho. We know we can make the outfield plays, 
the thing is, is the bat is in at the depths of hell. It's struggling so, so mightily right now. So if he can start to pull himself sort of back into form, leaving this season, hopefully he can carry that into next season, but I'm going to have to see a lot more to, for me to be confident in Dalton Varsho at the plate. Yeah, he's, he's a guy that's advertised as a defender and for great reason, just another robbery in the seventh inning off Gunnar Henderson, a jumping catch at the wall. This guy should be a platinum club. It's not up for discussion for me anymore. The Toronto Blue Jays don't have a lot to be positive about. So for a guy, if we're going to have to watch this team, at least we got to watch Dalton Varsho's amazing defense. There's not a guy that I can think of off the top of my head that has better defense than Dalton Varsho. You don't need Dalton Varsho again to go out and hit 270 necessarily. He doesn't have to be an average guy. If he can hit 20 to 25 home runs, he can hit around that 230 mark and OPS of like 720, 730. I'm not going to complain about that when you have one of the best defenders in all of baseball. Uh, a guy, again, just his reaction time in the outfield is absolutely insane. So for Varsho, he's been hitting the fastball a little bit better. Had a good at-bat today where he was fighting off a lot of high pitches. Ended up flying out to deep uh, right center field. But overall, he's went Dalton Varsho to have more competitive at-bats. You can have him as a left-handed power bat lower in this lineup. Especially if you're just looking for positive for the rest of the season. You want him to build off something and hopefully can build on it for the 2025 season. But back to Dalton Varsho. I have some quotes from John Schneider and one from Chris Bassett as well. Just on how valuable Dalton Varsho is to this team. So John Schneider actually goes in on Dalton Varsho's catch going off the wall. So he says, he verbalizes that. If you're going to be an elite outfielder, you can't be afraid of the wall. We're spoiled. You see Dalton Varsho just putting his body on the line pretty much day in and day out. Making, it seems like a jumping catch or a diving catch, whatever it is. Some sort of spectacular catch pretty much every single series you watch him play. Absolutely insane. And then Chris Bassett goes on to continue the, the praise for Varsho and says, if he doesn't win the platinum glove, we need to get rid of it. He's the best defender in all of baseball, and it's not even close. Chris Brassett, more respected guy. He's got better bet him myself. Dalton Varsho, again, you want to see the offense kind of start to creep up a little bit and be more consistent. But what a damn outfielder this guy is. He's absolutely insane. One of the best to do it for the season and probably the best outfielder in the game of baseball right now. Yeah, you know, when I think of Dalton Varsho, I sort of think of, you know, the outfield version of me and slow pitch a little bit, Carter. Making all those diving catches. Come on. Give me a little bit of praise. That was pretty sick. Um, no, me and Carter had a slow pitch game, and I probably had to dive 17 times because these balls were just spinning. The ground was the hardest ground of all time. You could have you could have played tennis out there. That's how ridiculous it was. Um, but no, Dalton Varsho, and uh, you know, Chris Bassett really summed it up perfectly. If he doesn't win it, there shouldn't be an award because there is nobody better in baseball right now. And so, you know, big hat tips to him. And the other guy I have to give a little bit of a hat tip to at first base is Vladdy. I think he's been so much better defensively since we tied these conversations at the beginning of the season. He's been making those quick scoops, like uh, like a play that would happen at like third base when he used to play there. It, it would be those quick line drives at the corner. He'd be able to scoop them, tag the bag, and he gets out of it. And, he, and he's been doing a really good job of that lately. So a guy that doesn't, his defense doesn't get talked about enough. And sometimes we're pretty aggressively hard on him. Uh, I, I really haven't had a problem with Vlad's defense at all as of late. Uh, so if he can keep that up, that's a huge bonus as well to everything else that he does for this team. No, hundred percent. You don't, you're not necessarily worried about Vladdy's defense when he's smoking baseballs and has like the top 10 OPS in the league. I'm going to quickly go back to that Dalton Varsho slow pitch thing. Yeah, you're right. Maybe you're defensively, you're like him, but you're also hitting like him as well. So, I mean, you got to take what you can get. You get the good defense. You don't get the power bat. But anyway, um, yeah, with Vladimir Guerrero Jr., he's been a lot better recently. I haven't really noticed him make a play that I'm like, oh, damn, should have had that. Felt like I was saying that a lot at the start of the season. Now, again, maybe it's just because I'm like, there's an error at this point. I, I'm not as mentally involved in it as I used to be. Not They're not under as big of a microscope scope in the little aspects of the game because right now, again, you do the little things right. That's how you win baseball games, but it doesn't really matter if the Toronto Blue Jays are winning baseball games right now. But he had an, a nice scoop off of a play up the middle to Leo Jimenez. I think he made a nice jumping throw, and Vladdy had to kind of step back and make uh, an awkward catch on first base, make it look, made it look pretty easy. So it's been nice to see a guy that uh, struggled early on this season, struggled at the end of last season defensively, coming off of a gold glove as well, I believe, in 2022. So he's kind of been all over the map defensively. Just, again, for, if you want to be a great baseball player in this league, there's a bunch of different tools, five-tool players, as they say. Well, he's not, not necessarily the fastest guy, and I wouldn't say he's lagging, but if he can keep up that fielding, keep up that bat, power of the contact, he can be a very good five-tool player, and he can be one of the best on the Toronto Blue Jays to ever do it. Again, this guy's 25 years old, and his worst year so far has been like a 26 home run, 
90 RBI seasons. So the sky's the limit for Vladdy. If you can get, pick up that defense and continue to blast the ball offensively, this is going to be one hell of a ball player. Yeah, Carter. And you know what? At the start of this season and going into it in the, you know, from the off season, we had so many conversations about was Vladdy's big year, the anomaly. And I think there was a lot of that conversation going on in Blue Jays media, in MLB media, and everybody talking about it in podcasts, radio shows, uh, you know, sports and whatever you want to say. Um, I think that Vlad's proving all of those conversations false. I think that this is a guy, and I think it's time that we do give him his flowers. I think this is the Vlad that we are going to be getting. I think he is one of the best baseball players in the league, and, and you're welcome to try to argue that with me. But really, from a guy who's had one bad season, and a little bit, I guess, the, uh, the start of this year, but he picked it up so aggressively that you can't say anything. Um, so, again, if you, if you guys feel differently, you can definitely debate us in the comments. we got so much more to get into, plus a, a little bit of Jays news before we take a look at the fi- or at the second game of this series. So, Carter, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back with some Jays news and a little bit more of an in-depth breakdown of some players we thought did pretty well uh, coming out of this game and maybe looking forward into 2025. Today's episode is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you can pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks is very simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entries in as little as 60 seconds. So right now, I'm trying to do this the entire year. I said the Toronto Blue Jays should be doing this all year. But again, it's hard to ride the hot hand when you don't have a lot of hot hands. But I'm going to try to ride the hot hand here. I got Ashton Barger over one and a half bases. I have Vladimir Guerrero Jr. over one and a half hits. I think he's going to have a good start here in the second game of the Baltimore Orioles series. I'm also taking Spencer Horwitz more than one and a half bases. He's been okay recently, but it's just more of a fan pick. I want to see Spencer Horwitz do well. So I'm going to place my money on him and hopefully give him a little bit of luck to do that. So if you know which players are going to perform on specific nights, this is a no-brainer. Download Prize Picks and start making your picks today. You can download the app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit matchup to one hundred dollars. That's code Locked On MLB for a first deposit matchup to one hundred dollars. So Carter, like we said, we got some Jays news to get into, and some players that uh, you know we really should give a little bit of a light on here. Uh, and Carter, I'll throw it to you because I know there's one guy in particular that you want to uh, to talk about going into this segment. Yeah, I'm really going to focus on one guy, but I'm just going to give uh, this guy a shout out as well. You talked to him at the end of that last segment there, and that is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. once again. Uh, AL Player of the Week last week. Probably could have been AL Player of the Month for the month of July, but that is an argument we can get into a different day. It was Christian Walker. Sorry, uh, Player of the Month in general, not AL Player, just Player of the Month. It was Christian Walker obviously with the D-backs, but you look at the stats, Vladdy was just way better. But again, he'll take his flowers or AL player of the week. But the guy I wanted to get into, a guy that we haven't necessarily been the nicest to on this podcast, and again, a guy that's been under our microscope ever since a specific trade for a player named Dalton Varsho, and that is Alejandro Kirk. So once you trade Gabriel Moreno Jr. to the D-backs, and then obviously this year even more now that Danny Jansen's been traded to the Boston Red Sox, Alejandro Kirk is going to be under a microscope. He's going to be getting a ton of playing time for the rest of the season, and he's going to have to pick it up. A guy that has not been very good since the 2022 season was an all-star in that year, but his numbers in 2023 were weighed down. His numbers, honestly, for the first half, if not two-thirds of this season were down as well. But as of recently, he's caught a little bit of fire and has started to play a little bit of a better brand of baseball. So on the season, again, these numbers aren't popping off the page just because he's kind of picked up recently, but he's hitting 245. Only three home runs. I'm not really worried about the home runs or Alejandro Kirk. Not really a power guy. I do want to see his barrel percentage. I want to see his OPS be higher up. He's OPS is only at a 647. That's going to walk a lot. But again, when you have a high contact rate, he's not striking out a lot. High contact rate for a guy that doesn't have great sprint speed usually doesn't work out. So he's going to have to barrel up baseball. He's going to have to drive baseball in the outfield because he's not going to be legging out a lot of infield singles. But saying that, going over Dalton Varsho, or sorry, Dalton Varsho, Alejandro Kirk's, uh stats over the last 15 or so games so in the last 15 he is batting uh a solid 364 with a 365 obp and slugging of 473 
Uh, that is 20 for 55, one home run, 13 RBIs in this uh, last 15 games. And over the last seven, he's been even better with a 423 average, a 414 OBP, and a 615 slugging. That goes for an OPS of 1.029. Okay, you don't need Alejandro Kirk to be hitting 400 to be an effective catcher. You probably just need this guy to hit 250, 260, uh, come up in clutch situations. He's not doing very well in leverage right now. He's about at a buck 50. Not necessarily going to play, but this is a problem that a lot of Blue Jays players have. They're not hitting well with runners scoring position in high leverage situations. But with Alejandro Kirk, with how solid he is defensively, being very high in percentiles, in blocking, in framing, a lot of good things for Alejandro Alejandro Kirk here, one of the best framers in the league, is throwing runners out at a pretty good clip as well. So for a guy that has good defensive skills, uh, he's not very fast on base paths, obviously. But if he can start barreling baseballs, he can start driving baseballs in the outfield, start hitting gaps, and start coming up in clutch situations. This is a guy that's going to be one of my key players to watch for the rest of this season and into 2025. It's this, if this Toronto Blue Jays team wants to retool and be successful for that year of 2025. Yeah, Carter, like you said, uh, you know, looking forward to 2025 players that we're keeping an eye on. We are going to do an episode specifically based on that. Guys that need to show up for this team to be, I know a lot of you don't like to hear this, you think it's ridiculous, but for this team to be competitive next year. That is the goal of this team uh, and and this management group. But that's what they're pumping into uh, Blue Jays land right now. So we're going to have to take a look at which guys that have to be better, have to stay on their pace have to be good going into 25, and we will do that. Talking about Alejandro Kirk, uh, Carter, yeah, you know what? A, a very up-and-down hitter, um, but when he's hot, man, he's fun to watch. I don't know if it's just the way he runs. I don't know if it's the way he swings. I don't know if it's a combination of everything, but I, I've always enjoyed watching Kirk, but then when he's bad, oh, my God, is he bad. He actually outran a double play today, uh, so good on him. He got the, he got the legs moving a little bit, which was, uh, well, I don't want to say good to see because he almost hit into a double play, but at least he was able to get to first base. And uh, I know that's a huge problem with him is he does hit into what seems like a ton of double plays. Um, so if he can keep, if he can keep sort of that out of his game and, and elevate that baseball a little bit more, find some holes, find some gaps, as you were saying, I think that's the Alejandro Kirk we need. And you don't need him to go out and be your best hitter on the team. He just has to go out and be serviceable because his defense, like you said, speaks for itself. The way he frames pitches is next level. It is otherworldly. He is so good. He he gets the umpires all the time, and I know a lot of people hate that because you know eventually they're going to go to the you know uh, automated strike zone or or the challenge system. Most likely, it won't be a complete automated system, but that's going to hurt Kirk. But as of right now, when the umpires have to make the call, Kirk does just an outstanding job. So really, really, um, you know, sort of hat tip to him over the past few games. Carter, there's a couple other things I want to get into. Uh, just a quick, some just quick Blue Jays news. Uh, the Buffalo uh, Bisons, uh, the Jays AAA affiliate, have released Aaron Sanchez. He had a 6.6 ERA over 16 innings pitch, so he's gone. Uh, see you later. Thanks for coming back for whatever a month. I don't know. Just a waste. I, it was what it was. You know what he was going to be. I didn't think anybody expected, you know, the world out of this guy. Uh, a few other notes. Jake Bloss joins AAA Buffalo and is slated to start Saturday. So um, I will be keeping my eye very much glued to that game. I'm going to be trying to keep up with the stats, see how he does. That's a guy I'm very interested in to see if he can be a piece for this team next year or debatably the following year after that. But I think if they can get him into the system next year, debating on what's going to happen with Alec Manoa and if he's going to start the season or if he's, it's going to be a couple months in, I'll have to wait and see. Jake Bloss might be that fifth guy that they try to uh, sort of rope into the starting five um a couple other guys were um promoted from uh, to buffalo from double a uh yeah and a couple of high a guys removed as well just some a lot of lineup management stuff here carter right like a lot of these young guys they're trying to get them better at bats trying to get them more competitive um situations if that's moving them from a to double a from double a to triple a just just moving a lot of guys around to see how they can perform at the next level i think the blue jays want to um, you know, sort of get these guys going a little bit quicker than necessarily they thought they would have. Um, but looking at next season, if they can get some of these prospects going, I think that's going to be a huge component if if they're good. Again, we said if even if they hit on three of the guys they traded for, that's a win in our books because you never know how these prospects are going to turn out. But Jake Bloss looks like a guy that will absolutely um, have, you know, at least a stint with this team. 
Yeah, for sure. Just before I get into that stuff, I have a lot to say, but I just want to go back to Alejandro Kirk quickly because we I figured out the perfect scenario for Alejandro Kirk. I just was wondering, what does this guy need to do to be consistent? And I think I figured it out. So the, start off, you can't play at the Rogers Center, Center anymore. Alejandro Kirk might hate Canada. He might not be a Toronto guy because when you're looking at his home splits here, he's not hitting very well at the Rogers Center. He's only hitting 219 for an OPS just over 600 at 627. And when he's on a, on the road, he's hitting 270. They'll take a 270 clip for Alejandro Kirk, OPS of 665, uh, barreling up a lot more baseballs, having better appearances in those type of games. And you're also looking at day games versus night games. Alejandro Kirk, he's not a night guy. He needs to sleep. He's got to actually get a good rest of the day. He's hitting 332 in day games, 179 in night games. Not great. Alejandro Kirk, scared of the dark. That's the narrative. Just don't can't have the dark with Alejandro Kirk. He needs to see the ball better. Can't have him playing night games. And then again, Got to get rid of the turf, unfortunately, for Alejandro Kirk. Doesn't like turf. Has to go to the grass. 277 on the grass. 221 on turf. The Roger Center isn't doing it right. He doesn't like turf. And that, the Roger Center is one of five parks that has turf. So if you want to adhere to Alejandro Kirk's needs and you want him to be a better baseball player, sorry, Rogers, got to do more renovations to the Roger Center. Tear out that turf. Start planting some grass. Got to figure it out for him. Got to do anything we can at this point to get some bats going for the Toronto Blue Jays offense. Yeah, Rogers is going to spend a whole bunch of money. They're like, we need Alondro Kirk, whatever we can do for this guy. No, that's hilarious. Um, so just in talking about Jake Blosscarter, I know I know, I keep going back to him, but he's a guy that I'm super interested in and I'm going to be paying attention. I might try to somehow watch. I'm not sure exactly how you watch these AAA games, but I might try to find a stream of it and, and pay attention that Saturday, at, at least for his outing, um, just to see how he does. I, I think that's a guy that I'm like pretty invested in, right? We, we got him through the trade of, you say Kikuchi and a guy that I think a lot of the fans are excited about. A lot of Astros fans were pissed, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, he's probably the number one guy I'm looking for right now, especially with Ricky Tiedemann being out with injury as well. So he's like the next man up. So yeah, I don't know. How do you feel about Jake Bloss and sort of uh, some of the moves, sort of the, the, the roster shuffling that's been going on within the Toronto Blue Jays? I think I like starting him in AAA. He hasn't had a lot of AAA starts at all. I think he completely just skipped AAA. Maybe would have had one start, but no, pretty much no service time for Jake Bloss in AAA. Just kind of gets sent to the MLB. You don't want a guy as young as him, as touted as he is, to just kind of lose his confidence right away in the major leagues. Nice to see him in AAA. And a guy that it's kind of, it sucks to say, but is probably a top five guy I want to be watching for the rest of the season. And he's not even with the Toronto Blue Jays. Obviously, I want Vladdy to play good. I want Farshow, Kirk, all these guys to play good. But Jake Bloss, Joey Lopervito, two guys that we got traded for. Maybe it's the recency bias. But I'm very excited to see what these guys can do. I'm excited to see what Jake Bloss has. And I probably will be overreacting to his start, whether it's really good, whether it's really bad, especially for this first one. Got to see with for my eyes for a full game what this guy has. Uh, hopefully it does go well for him. Hopefully he can build on the confidence. I just uh, I want him to kind of ride it out in AAA. I think I'm kind of going away from what I said before. I want him to build some confidence, keep that low ERA, keep these low expected stats, because that's exactly what we're going to need next season, especially when you're looking at Ricky Tito and you're looking at some of the guys that could be traded and just how the offseason might go. So you're going to need a fifth starter looking like for this upcoming season, whether that's Alec Manoa, whether that it ends up being uh, some of these guys – uh, you're going to have to put them out there. They're going to have to have better performances. And this is a guy that hopefully we can rely on for the upcoming coming season in Jake Bloss. Yeah. And it, uh, it'll be, uh, you know what? I just thought about it, Carter, talking about our golf tournament and everything. We're going to be on the course, I think, for the Jake Bloss start. So me and you might have, I might throw on the AAA Buffalo Bisons in the cart as we're sort of driving around waiting for Jarvis on the, to be, you know, to take 40 minutes on each hole. We're going to have lots of time to watch the game. So. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my brother is the slowest golfer of all time. Um, he's picked it up this year, but overall, like last year, was it was just the worst thing ever. There was four groups piled up behind him. I, I don't want to go off on the guy because you know what? Um, this year he has gotten a lot better, and I have to give him his props. But for those of you who golf and know, if you hate slow golf, you will never come anywhere near our group of friends trying to play because it is terrible. Uh, Carter's, you know, Carter's not as bad, but he's pretty slow too um no offense uh we we got a lot more to get into guys a lot of more blue jays news here and then uh obviously taking a look at uh you know today's game where we gotta you know at this point we gotta sort of pick apart things right little things that we're seeing that are that are sparking some ideas from this team going into 2025 so that's pretty much every day sort of what i'm going to be paying attention to right who's in the lineup where are they hitting how are they hitting in certain spots stuff like that so that stuff I'll be watching for in the next few games as they're going for it. Again, like I said, 
we'll uh, we'll sort of get into that right away as soon as we're uh, back from this break. Today's episode brought to you by Liquid IV. As you guys know, I'm a huge supporter of Liquid IV because I need it all the time because it feels like it's 100 degrees in this apartment at all times. And in saying that, I wake up like the one of the most dehydrated people of all time. It doesn't matter if it's a weekend. It doesn't matter if it's a Tuesday. It could be cold in here, and somehow it's still feel, I still feel like I'm just dehydrated beyond possible belief. So Liquid IV is the perfect add to that. It's a perfect rip and teal, uh, rip and peel system. I just pour it in a bottle of water or in a glass, stir it up. I'm good to go. It gives me the electrolytes that I need. Powered by live hydrosense, an optimized ratio of electrolytes, essential vitamins, and clinically tested nutrients that turn ordinary water into extraordinary hydration. That's 20% off your first order when you shop better hydration today using promo code MLB at liquidiv.com. Like I said, if you guys are people that like to go on the weekends, you know, maybe not hydrate like you should, Liquid IV is there for you. I'm telling you, it is one of my favorite things right now. So, Carter, getting back into it here, sort of uh, another Blue Jays game today. Uh, it's Rogers versus Bad Francis. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know how you feel about this, but me necessarily. I just, I'm always scared. Whenever it's the Baltimore Orioles, I'm just terrified. We won yesterday, and I'm still just terrified of seeing this team because I know Gunnar Henderson could hit, you know, just have the most insane day, or Adley Rutschman could go up and hit a bomb, or Jackson Holiday could hit another one because he might as well. Two of his three home runs have come against the Toronto Blue Jays, so he might as well add another one to that as well. Um, I don't know. I don't know. What do you, How do you feel about these games? Like, my feelings are always now that the Blue Jays are going to lose and that when they do win, it's a little bit of a surprise. Uh, I just don't see them honestly winning a series against a good team anymore. So if they can pick this one up against the Orioles, I'll be thrilled. Do I think it's going to happen? No, honestly. Yeah, you have some of the lowest expectations of all time. But before we go into this next game, I can't believe we didn't even bring this up in the first uh, segment here. Joey Lopervito, first uh, bat of the game. Yeah. What, what a catch from this guy. Dalton Varsho, we're talking about his defense all the time. Joey Lopriel put his, putting his body on the line, really trying to cement his role for the 2025 team and for the rest of the 2024 season. I didn't realize how fast this guy was. He has a 90, 90th percentile sprint speed, and I saw it on this catch specifically. If this guy can start feeling, he's obviously a very good hitter. He has a very good barrel rate as well. A guy that can hit for power has shown that he can do that. This guy, we're talking. I was talking about five-tool baseball players earlier. This guy might be a real five-tool baseball player. Very exciting to watch Joey Loperito for the future. But again, I'll let you do a quick comment on that, and then I'll kind of go over what I'm just expecting to see for the rest of this uh, Baltimore Orioles series. Yeah, honestly, talking about that catch, it feels like forever ago. It was right at the beginning of the game. So, uh, no, it, it sort of yeah, slipped my mind, too. But, no, great thing you brought that up. I, I was really excited to watch him sort of lay out for that baseball and make that play. That's what you want to see from these guys, right? They, they, they're giving it their full effort. He's giving it his full effort. He's, he's having decent at-bats. I mean, Obviously, yesterday's game wasn't, you know, the most ideal for day at the plate for him. But I think him making those catches, what we've seen from him so far, it, it does show a little bit of a promise here for Joey Lopervito as well. So, Carter, I'll throw it back to you just to go back on sort of your feelings just about the the Orioles, the Blue Jays, how you feel like going into these games, getting ready to watch them. I mean, what, what's your just thought process? Well, again, I'll kind of go back into the lineups. Also, Alejandro Kirk home run. Didn't really allude to that, but that's why we were talking about him so much. You obviously, know, Alejandro Kirk home runs. But just, again, looking at the lineup, like Colton Kowser, Kobe Mayo, another prospect for the Baltimore Orioles. Santander, Gunnar Henderson, Ryan O'Hearn, Ellie Rutschman. Ellie Rutschman's not even hitting that well right now. His last 30 games, his OPS is like 550 or something like that. Hasn't really been going well for him. Jackson Holiday is like hitting eight for this team. They have Ilo Jimenez. They just got the trade deadline. This is such a good roster. Kind of got lucky in that uh, first game of the series. Grayson Rodriguez scratched at the last minute. Not really sure what happened there. Albert Suarez ended up pitching. Didn't even pitch that bad. They got uh, a decent starting pitching depth in the Orioles system. But these are just two teams on different stratospheres in terms of talent on their baseball teams right now. We're looking at prospects. We're trying to figure out which prospects are good. We're just really scratching at the surface, looking for anything at this point to stick. Whereas the Baltimore Orioles probably have five more guys ready in their AAA system right now that just don't have anywhere to play on this Baltimore Orioles roster because it is so deep and so talented. So overall, I'm just looking for, again, it's it's not necessarily series wins at this point. It's not like sweeping the Orioles. I would love to see that, but not my expectation. I'm just looking for Aston Bart to continue to rake. I want Vladdy to have good at-bats. 
Jorgen Rodriguez, another guy I want to see Katana continue to develop and build confidence. It's really about individual player performances, trends, what we can take into the next 2025 season. Because the 2024, other than just having baseball on and kind of enjoying these last 50 games of the season, even though the Toronto Blue Jays probably aren't going to win even half of those games. It's just about enjoying what we have right now because we always say in the dog days of the offseason, we're going to be missing the Toronto Blue Jays, even if they are losing games to good teams, bad teams, whatever it is. Yeah, that's that's sort of where I am, right? I, I've been talking to a few people uh, lately just about wa- going back and watching the 2015 Game 5. And you know what? I, uh, I, I've been I've been trying to hold off because I, there's a couple people I want to watch it with, uh, you included, Carter. we got to throw it on the TV one day. And, you know, maybe that's an off-season thing. Maybe we'll go back. Maybe we'll do, like, a big watch party of that game just as a sort of a fun reminder of what Blue Jays baseball could be because I, I keep seeing it pop up on my YouTube, and every day I got to, like, pull myself back and be like, hey, watch the team now. Watch the team now. Don't don't live in the past. Don't live in the past. But what a fun, fun time to watch. And uh, I know I'm probably going to save it for the off-season so that, you know, when there is no baseball, at least I can go back and, you know, keep up on my – on my Jays baseball. Uh, but yeah, like you said, going forward, it's, it, it's a hundred percent about, uh, you know, single player performances. The wins really don't matter anymore. It's not going to in the grand scheme of things. It's, I mean, it's great when it happens, but in the grand scheme of things, you, you're wanting to see things that can be carried over into 2025. And so that's sort of what I'm excited about as well, Carter. Uh, I guess Carter, I don't know. I don't really have much else. Is there anything, you know, sort of before we get going uh, that you have? Yeah, I got two things. So the first one's just going to be about like uh, this, not about wins and losses. Unfortunately for us right now, the, for the like for the betterment of the Toronto Blue Jays for their future, you kind of want them to lose every single game. Unfortunately, you want them to have a better lottery position, and you want them to be able to get a higher draft pick so they have a higher slot value and they can sign more players in uh, in the draft in an international pool, things like that. And we're getting lucky this season because the Chicago White Sox and the Oakland Athletics are not eligible for a top ten pick. Obviously, two teams that are not very good. Colorado Rockies will be a team I'm watching closely. The Los Angeles Angels, teams like that, that aren't necessarily that good right now, that uh, can compete with this draft lottery. But I'm never going to be a guy that's like preying on the downfall of losses, other than for my Carolina Panthers, because that team's just been so bad for so long, can't really handle it anymore. And for that, there's no lottery. You just, if you're losing, you actually get your pick. So that's all the difference in the NFL. For the Jays, I mean, like for a chance at the first round pick, like I think if you have the highest odds, it's like 20 something percent which is cool and all, but then you lose all these games and then you don't get the first round pick anyway, or the first overall pick, I should say. Just not not something I'm going to get behind. I'm never going to cheer for a team that's just in the lottery to lose. I want the Blue Jays to win, even though they are probably out of the playoffs. I don't care. Still don't want my Blue Birds to lose any baseball games. Yeah, I, I, I that's how I feel all the time. I know when the Canucks had a bad season two years ago, uh, they were sort of in that question of possibly getting, I think, what was that the Connor Bedard year? Yes, it was. Yeah, so the Connor Bedard year. So, I mean, that year was an exception where I'm like, you know what, if we're going to lose, just tank. Bottom of the barrel, let's go get Connor Bedard. But uh, it didn't happen, obviously. And for the betterment of the of the Vancouver Canucks, because they came back the next season and were absolutely lights out. Fun to watch. Hopefully that's what can happen here with the Jays. You said you had one more, if I'm not mistaken, right, Carter? Yeah, yeah it's just a couple updates. So I got Joey Votto, Boba Shett, and uh, Jordan Romano, just from what John Schneider said. So Joey Votto, obviously, home run, hit a home run in AAA on Sunday. There has been some pressing matters to see like, whether we're going to see Joey Votto for the rest of the season. So Ben Nicholson-Smith asked John Schneider about this. And Schneider said they are open to promoting him if he's physically and mechanically ready. You sign him for a reason he goes into. I think you make room for him. I think having a guy like him here within the clubhouse goes a long way. By the time he's up, you're getting 40 games of Joey Votto. I don't know how long of a way it's necessarily going to go, especially when there's not a lot to play for. But at this point, I want to see Joey Votto play a game of baseball. Like, again, we're looking for something to be happy, positive about, something to get excited to watch. Not necessarily a lot to be excited to watch about for the Toronto Blue Jays baseball. But again, if you have Joey Votto playing at first base, can I start at DH? I will be very excited to watch Joey Votto's first at bat in the blue for the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, me too. That's a guy that uh, just excites me. Like it's 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 not he's not going to make the biggest difference, but you know what? To see Joey Votto, Canadian boy, in the blue, red, and white. I mean, I'm just uh, it, it'll, it'll just get me going. I'll be I'll be fired up. I'm going to be. That's a game that I would again would be tuned right into just to see him and his first at bat. That might be one of those games that I put like a dollar bet on Joey Votto to hit a home run or something. So. Yeah, we'll see. I I really do hope he makes an appearance. 
Yeah, add them to your FanDuel bets, get them on the legs, get exactly. it figured out. You know, yep. you just got to try to make some money off the Toronto Blue Jays team that's struggling. And maybe Joey Votto is your, your little cash cow. But going in, it's, I don't have much to say about this, but again, it's just an update from Ben Nicholson Smith. Uh, he asked Schneider before the game if there's enough time for Bo Bichette to get back in the big leagues this season. John Schneider said there should be, and that's that's pretty much all he got into. That's all I got here. So uh, you could see Joe, Bo Bichette coming back. Uh, that's something we're going to have to get more updates, obviously, on. Uh, throughout the season, that's why I kind of left this to the last thing. Not too much there, but it is a possibility to see Bo Bichette come back and play for this baseball team. And the other one, again, Jordan Romano. He said that they would love to see him come back and pitch, but again, no exclusive timeline quite yet. So just kind of vague answers from John Schneider. Thought it was interesting to throw them in, even because I just wanted to figure out, with the lost Toronto Blue Jays season, are you going to want to pitch these guys that have been superstars in the past, guys that have been very good for your baseball team? Don't necessarily want to watch them back from being injured or rush them back from being injured. Obviously, you see what happens with Bo Bichette when he hasn't fully recovered. So overall, for me, I just want to see these guys get healthy. But if we can get any sort of reinforcements to this Toronto Blue Jays team for the rest of the season, I'm definitely not going to say no to seeing Jordan Romano pitch or Bo Bichette get some at-bats for the rest of 2024. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens. I mean, I'm not, I'm sort of not one way or the other. I, I think if they come back and we get to see a little bit of them, great. Maybe it's a, sort of a look forward to 2025. If they don't come back, I don't hate that either. Rest them up, make sure they're fully healed, give them lots of recovery time. I don't really hate that either. And I think that's probably the way I'm leaning. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, I mean, to see Jordan Romano again would would be uh, would be electric. Hopefully he can bring his good stuff back. Uh, but, you know, as always, guys, we want to thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen today. Now go check out the Locked On MLB podcast. Prepare for the fall classic with Sully, who has it all covered every single day. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can find the link to Locked On MLB in the description, so you don't need to search. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Again, Sully does a great job. He's really, really one of the, uh, you know, he's just a pro. He's been doing this for a long time. He knows exactly what to cover. He brings some really good information. So I really suggest going checking him out uh, for your second listen every day. Um, Carter, anything else before we head out here? Because I'm, I need a drink or something. I'm dying over here. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to just thank the people of this, watching this podcast again, the likes, comments, subscriptions recently has been awesome. Just uh, seeing how many people are still involved with the Toronto Blue Jays season. Definitely nice to see. Nice to see how loyal Toronto Blue Jays fans are. Even if the recency bias for some of their uh, perspectives gets a little crazy sometimes, but that just shows that uh, Blue Jays fans definitely have a love for the game of baseball. But we have noticed that about 68% of you guys are not subscribed. If you guys are coming back, watching our podcast every single day, helps us out a ton. If you guys do subscribe and also keeps our podcast shorts, videos, at the top of your for you page other than that no don't got too much hopefully we can win a series against the baltimore orioles maybe play a little bit of, of spoiler here they got a big division race going on but when you're against the new york yankees i think i'd rather see the baltimore orioles win the division don't want to see the yankees get any free handouts especially when they have aaron judge juan soto two of the best players in all the baseball want to see some of their other guys actually work for it and maybe see garrett cole get blown up in a, a high leverage situation coming down for the this stretch uh for this division lead but other than that, just, uh, just we're continuing the grind. We'll keep coming out with episodes, and hopefully the Toronto Blue Jays can just win a couple of baseball games down the stretch. Saying that, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow, and just uh, have a good night.